You might think time travel is only for sci-fi movies, but quantum mechanics brings us closer to this mind-bending concept. How? Well, it all comes down to something called closed time-like curves, or CTCs. These are loops in space-time that could, theoretically, allow you to travel back in time. Now, back in the 1980s, a physicist named Igor Novikov came up with the self-consistency principle. This principle suggests that if you were to travel back in time, you couldn't change the past in a way that would create a paradox. So, no accidentally erasing your own existence. But here's where it gets really interesting. Quantum mechanics and Novikov's principle don't always see eye to eye. Quantum mechanics relies on two fundamental ideas, unitarity and linearity. Unitarity means that the total probability of all possible outcomes in a quantum system is always one, and linearity is the principle that helps us calculate combined probabilities. There are two main ways to explain quantum time travel while sticking to Novikov's principle. The first uses something called a density matrix, which helps describe probabilities in quantum systems. The second method involves state vectors, which are a bit trickier and lead to some wild concepts that stray from conventional quantum mechanics. The Novikov self-consistency principle, also known as the Novikov self-consistency conjecture and Larry Niven's law of conservation of history, was developed by Russian physicist Igor Dmitrievich Novikov in the mid-1980s. Novikov introduced this principle to tackle the problem of paradoxes in time travel which theoretically could occur in certain solutions of general relativity that contain what are known as closed time-like curves, or CTCs. The principle asserts that if an event exists that would cause a paradox or any change to the past whatsoever, then the probability of that event is zero. In simple terms, it would be impossible to create time paradoxes. Physicist David Deutsch showed in 1991 that this model of computation could solve NP problems in polynomial time. Later, Scott Aronson extended this result to show that the model could also be used to solve the space problems in polynomial time. Essentially, Deutsch demonstrated that quantum computation with a negative delay, backwards time travel, produces only self-consistent solutions. The chronology violating region imposes constraints that are not apparent through classical reasoning. Researchers published a simulation in 2014 in which they claimed to have validated Deutsch's model with photons. However, an article by Tolksdorf and Virch later showed that Deutsch's self-consistency condition can be fulfilled to arbitrary precision in any quantum system described according to relativistic quantum field theory, even in spacetimes that do not admit closed time-like curves. This casts doubts on whether Deutsch's model is truly characteristic of quantum processes simulating closed time-like curves in the sense of general relativity. In a subsequent article, the same authors demonstrated that Deutsch's CTC fixed point condition can also be fulfilled in any system governed by the laws of classical statistical mechanics, even if it is not composed of quantum systems. They concluded that Deutsch's condition is not specific to quantum physics, nor does it depend on the quantum nature of a physical system, so it can be fulfilled. Consequently, Tolksdorf and Virch argue that Deutsch's condition is not sufficiently specific to make definitive statements about time travel scenarios or their hypothetical realization by quantum physics. Another fascinating theory is Deutsch's prescription for closed time-like curves, or CTCs. In 1991, physicist David Deutsch proposed a groundbreaking way to understand how quantum systems could interact with CTCs. His method aimed to address paradoxes like the infamous grandfather paradox, where a time traveller could potentially prevent their own birth, creating a contradiction. However, Deutsch's approach suggests that such a paradox might lead the traveller into a parallel universe rather than altering their original timeline. Deutsch's analysis divides the system into two parts, a subsystem outside the CTC and the CTC itself. He used a unitary operator, denoted as U, to describe the combined evolution of both parts over time. This mathematical approach relies on density matrices to represent the states of the subsystem and the CTC, combined using a tensor product. Interestingly, Deutsch assumed no initial connection between these two parts, breaking time symmetry. He justified this with arguments from measurement theory and the second law of thermodynamics. According to Deutsch's proposal, any measurable property of the CTC will return to its initial state after completing a loop, ensuring consistency. However, this raises some concerns. 
If the system retains memories after traveling through the CTC, it could lead to inconsistencies where the system has experienced different possible pasts or multiple histories. Moreover, Deutsch's approach may conflict with standard probability calculations in quantum mechanics unless we consider the possibility of multiple pasts during the journey through the CTC. Another intriguing aspect of Deutsch's theory is the potential for multiple solutions or fixed points for the system's state after the loop, introducing an element of randomness. Deutsch suggested using the solution with the highest entropy, aligning with the natural tendency of systems to become more random over time. To calculate the final state outside the CTEC, a specific mathematical operation called trace is used, considering only the external system's state after the combined evolution. This combined evolution is described by a tensor product of the density matrices for both systems, Followed by applying the unitary operator, U. Deutsch argued that the solution maximizing von Neumann entropy is the most relevant. In this case, the qubit becomes a mix of starting at zero and ending at one, or vice versa. His interpretation, which aligns with the many worlds view of quantum mechanics, avoids paradoxes by suggesting that the qubit travels to a different parallel universe after interacting with the CTC. Researchers have explored the potential of Deutsch's ideas, hypothesizing that computers near a time machine might solve problems far beyond the capabilities of classical computers. However, Tolksdorf and Wirsch demonstrated that quantum systems lacking CTCs could still meet Deutsch's criteria with high accuracy, casting doubt on the uniqueness of his criterion for quantum simulations of CTCs. Furthermore, later work showed that classical systems governed by statistical mechanics could also meet these criteria. These findings suggest that Deutsch's criterion might not be specific to quantum mechanics and may not be suitable for inferring the possibilities of real-time travel or its potential realization through quantum mechanics. Consequently, Tolksdorf and Virch argue that these findings raise questions about the validity of Deutsch's explanation of his time travel scenario using the many worlds interpretation Another fascinating proposition is Michael Devin's model from 2001, which integrates closed time-like curves, CTCs, into thermodynamics. Devin's model offers a unique perspective on solving the infamous grandfather paradox by adding a noise factor to account for the imperfections of time travel. According to Devin, each cycle of time travel involving a quantum bit or qubit carries a usable form of energy known as nigentropy, the opposite of entropy or disorder. This nigentropy is proportional to the noise level in the time travel process. Essentially, this means that a time machine could theoretically extract work from a heat source, much like a thermal bath, in direct proportion to the nigentropy gained during each cycle. Moreover, Devin's model suggests that time machines could substantially reduce the effort required to crack complex codes through trial and error. Imagine a scenario where the computing power needed to solve intricate problems becomes drastically lower thanks to the nigentropy generated during time travel. However, there's a catch. As the noise level approaches zero, the usable energy and computing power become infinitely large. This implies that traditional categories for problem-solving difficulty, such as easy or very hard, might not apply to time machines operating at very low noise levels. While Devin's model remains entirely theoretical, it opens up intriguing possibilities for the future of computation and energy extraction through time travel. Could we one day harness the power of nigentropy to revolutionize our understanding of physics and technology? Only time will tell.